Alright guys, today we're going to do the carburetor on a Honda EU1000. It's the same concept with the EU2000. Um, it's going to be, we're going to do it the easy way, where it's not too much of a pain in the butt. Um, anybody can do it. Take flat out, pop this cover off. This is access to your carburetor and your oil drain, you know, such stuff like that. Um, on this, you want to change your oil every 75 hours. Um, I'll put the carburetor in the description below just in case this is really bad and you're not able to fix it. But most of the time, you're able to just to clean it out and it'll be okay. Um, because it, it's got a fuel pump, so it's not just draining fuel in there and tarring up the whole time. So most of the time, you can just fix this and be all right. All right, so we're gonna take these two eight millimeters out. We're gonna pop this air filter cover off. Air filter out. Just make sure there's no other, there's another screw somewhere in here. We gotta find it. Hold on, let me look for it. There's gotta be another one in here somewhere. Yeah, there's something holding down. Hold on, let me find it. Actually, I'm wrong. Usually there's another 10 millimeter down here, so all this comes off for the EU 2000, but this EU 1000, it's just a hose and a clamp on the back, so you just pull this right off and it pulls the hose right off of it. Just like that, just a hose. Um, you can pull this right out of this hose, get it out of the way. Alright, now we're going to go ahead and pull the fuel line clamp and the fuel line off. Okay, we got this out. If you see any of these on there, pull them off. These go right in here. These are the metal spacers. They will slide out. Don't lose them. They're important. Have them nice and in there, and they're ready for you. Now this carburetor will pull right off. Hoses, everything just comes right off. Just flip it upside down. Now take this 10 millimeter out the bowl. Oh, wait a minute. Is it? Yeah, 10 millimeter. Now we got the bowl up. You can see in here. Not horribly dirty, but there is build up and tar, and the gas is, is bad, it's bad gas. Um, so we got all this out of the way. Now we're gonna pull the pin on this and pull the floating needle valve out of the way. Don't lose the pin, don't lose the float, don't lose the needle valve. Do not remove the seal, just let it sit where it is. If it sticks to the bottom of the bowl, leave it right on there. All right, so now we're going to clean with carburetor cleaner and a straw. You know, the carb cleaner comes with a little straw. We're going to spray through this jet right here. Clean it out really good. Make sure that it comes out one of these holes. Spray through this hole, spray through this hole, and make sure like you can look through there and you'll see it spraying through here, it'll spray through here, and through the front you'll see it spray out a little jet on one of these as well. Just make sure all that's super clean, super clear. Also, clean out where the needle valve goes. Spray through this way, spray through this way, make sure that's completely clear as well. So underneath this idle screw here is another jet. That's an idle jet. This will surge if you don't clean that out. So what you want to do is tighten this in and count the turns, you know, count clockwise, count the turns till it snugs, and then bring it all the way out. That way you know how many turns to go in. You go all the way back in, come back out the exact amount of turns it was originally. Because this has an idle down, so if you have it idle down too much, it'll shut off. And if you have the idle down too little, it'll, it'll be higher rev and burn more fuel. So we want to count the turns clockwise in and then take it out and then this pops out with a flathead screwdriver you just pry it out. Okay so this is the plug that goes in there. You just got to spray through this and make sure it comes out these sides clean and clear. It's got two flat sides. The flat side goes against the carburetor when you put it back in so that it can go all the way down in. Rinse the float off and the needle valve off with carb cleaner really good. And then reinstall the float and put the pin in to hold it in place. Make sure the bowl is nice and clean. I use a flathead screwdriver to scrape any of the sludge off the bottom. And then rinse it out really good with carb cleaner so that there's no debris. Because what can happen is if you don't clean it out, it'll lift up and it'll clog the jet and it'll stop running. 
and it's got to be perfectly clean. Now when you install the float or the float bowl, you're going to make sure that the drain screw is pointed towards the choke. That way it's easily accessed to drain out your carburetor. Um, sometimes you can just drain the carburetor. I may have been able to do it with this one, just drain the carburetor, get some fresh gas inside of it, and it may have ran, but no video in that. So, all right. Make sure the bottom of the bowl bowl, bowl, bowl is nice and clean. Um, I rub it on my dickies, and then I rinse it off really good with carb cleaner, maybe scrape it with a screwdriver, whatever I gotta do, get it real nice and clean. Now we we're gonna put our carburetor back on, make sure your gasket is here. Um, if it has a little tear in it, that's okay. Um, just don't clean it off of it, like if some of it's stuck on the carburetor, leave it on there. Use some Indian head. Um, you can get any of the auto parts store. It's a uh, shellac and it's a little brush. Just brush down the back of the carburetor and back of the gasket, slide it on there and it'll seal it right up. You'll have no problem with it. But most of the time, it'll be fine. It'll look good. It'll be all right. Um, I'm pretty sure that when I put the carburetor in the description below, it'll have brand new gaskets, front and back, everything you need to do this job as well. Um, yeah. So put the carburetor on. See, we never chased down the wires. We never took off the electronic throttle. It's all stayed together, no issues. Um, this goes down into the bottom. It's just an overflow drain. This one goes into a little spot right here. It's just an over. It's just a drain. See, it goes right out here. It's just a drain. This is an overflow drain. Nothing severe. Nothing to worry about. All right. Got that on. Now we want to get the fuel line. Oh, it's getting pinched back here. Get the fuel line on here. We'll pull this out. Get the fuel line on the outside. Get that in. Actually, do not hook the fuel line up drain the tank get all the gas out of the tank right now blow the tank out with air if you have an air hose get all the leftovers out if you don't just uh, use a rag shove it in there you know uh, leave a piece out of it let it sit there for you know 10 15 minutes let it soak up whatever gas is left over in there and pull it out just get as much of it out of it as you can then put fresh fuel in brand new gas I use low octane um, it's uh, better if you use like uh, um, ethanol free like rec 90 it'll make this last a lot longer um, so rec 90 I highly suggest in these it'll even run better and more fuel efficient with rec 90 in it once you got fresh gas in it pull it over a bunch of times until you see the fuel coming out and it makes sure it gets all the bad gas out of the pump and the lines and it starts becoming good clean clear gas again Hold it tight. See it's yellow stuff coming out. It's not clear. There we go. It's starting to clear up. All this will just drain right on out the bottom. Now that you've got good clear gas going in, we're going to reattach the fuel line and uh, either let this sit for long enough to let all this evaporator out or break out your air hose again and blow it all out, get it dry in there. Place the uh, air filter cover back on, make, put it in the hose, get it lined up on in these holes, get it pushed on and get it shoved on to the air filter assembly in the back. I actually found it easier to pull the hose off of this one shove it on that side and then shove this on you can work around get it in the bottom and then work around with a screwdriver the top to pop it back on put the two eight millimeter nuts back on now before we put the air filter on we're going to do a, a initial start so check your oil make sure it's full of oil it should be all the way up to the top of the thread you know where the threads are it should be up to the top make sure your switch is on Make sure your idle down switch, your eco throttle switch is off. Just for now, we're gonna turn that back on. Make sure that your fuel vent is on. Um, we're gonna take some carb cleaner, the straw, and we're gonna squirt it up in the very top back here just to give it an initial bit of fuel to start on to help the pump fill up the carburetor and get it running 
Uh, and then full choke is all the way to the right. This is choke off, this is choke on. And we're gonna pull it until it fires. Oil is up to threads, that means it's full. It has to be to the top of these cross hatches. All right, now you got this all running perfectly. You're gonna put your air filter foam back in, and then your air filter. Make sure your foam's nice and clean. If it's crumbling like that, put brand new in it. So I put the cover back in, flathead screw, tighten it down, and that's basically it. That's how you do a carburetor on EU 1000, and it's basically the same for the EU 2000. Same thing, just flip the carburetor over and go through it. This helped you in any way, shape, or form. Give me a thumbs up. Hit that subscribe button. Uh, any of the parts you may need, filters, plugs, uh, oil, whatever I can find, I'll put in the description below. Uh, today's t-shirt will be in the description below as well. If you want me to wear a business shirt of yours, mail me one. I'll be happy to wear it for a bunch of videos for you.